So we're talking about uh, measures of central tendency, and they can be used to describe an average value in a set of data. So the mean and the median gives us a sense of the center of the data set, and the mode is the value or values in the data set that have the highest frequency. Now the mean is, whoop, the mean is calculating um, the average by adding the data and dividing by the number of data. And here's our formula of x bar is equal to the summation of x. That's what that little symbol means, is summation. And it means you're going to add up all the data. And then we're going to divide by n, which is the number of data values we have. So for example one, we're going to find the mean of the number of pounds of compost uh, that at the Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival is an annual four-day music festival held in Manchester, Tennessee. At festivals such as Bonnaroo, organizers are committed to being green and they document their sustainability efforts. Imagine that the amounts of compost collected in pounds at five different recycling stations during the first day of a festival are found to be these values. We want to find the mean, the pounds, um, of compost generated at the five stations on the first day of the festival. So we're going to go to example one. And our, um, just to refresh, we've got our mean is equal to x bar, which is the summation of our x values over n. And we were given the values of 40, 42, 65, 51, and 55. Those were the pounds of garbage that they found at the five stations. There are five stations. There were five numbers given. We'll add up the top and get 253. Divided by five, we get 50.6. So this tells us that they found an average of 50.6 pounds of compost at the five stations. We often use the mean to compare data to see trends. We might look at the amounts of compost from the five stations at a previous year's festival. We might want to compare the, this mean to the mean of some other stations at the festival or at a different event. In example one, each data value occurred once. Often, however, some values in a data set occur several times, in which case we use a frequency table to compute the mean. So we are going to compute the mean of a frequency distribution of water temperatures. So the EPA, which is the Environmental Protection Agency, suspects that hot water discharge from a nuclear power plant is responsible for a recent fish kill. To investigate this problem, the agency has recorded the water temperature at a point downstream from the plant for the last 30 days. The graph summarizes the, the information obtained what is the mean temperature for the distribution? So here we've got our graph, and this will be the formula that we use for frequency. So this time the difference is, well, some do the summation still where we add them, but we're going to multiply each value times however many times they occur. And then we'll divide by that summation of frequencies. We know that it's going to be 30 total points because they did it for 30 days. Alrighty, so this will be example two. And for example two, we're going to do the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, the frequency, and then the product. So this will be our X, this will be our F, and this will be x times f. So we're going to go uh, get our temperatures off of our chart here. We have the temperature of 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, and 57. So I'm going to start by writing those numbers. 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, and 57.
And then we're going to look at how many times they occur. So 52 occurred four times. So that's the frequency. 53 occurred six times. 54 occurred three times. 55 occurred eight times. 56 occurred four times. And 57 occurred five times. So now what we're going to do is multiply 52 times 4, and that will get us 208. 53 times 6 equals 318. 54 times 3 equals 162. 55 times 8 equals 440. 56 times 4 equals 224. And 57 times 5 will get us 285. So what we're looking at is finding the totals. When we add all of these, this is the summation of our frequency. And when we add those, we get 30, which is what we should get because they did it for 30 days. And then this will be the summation of our x times f, because we took our x times our f, and that, when we add all those values, we get 1,637. So now to find our mean, we're going to use our formula of the summation of x times f divided by the summation of f. Well, that is our value of 1,637 divided by 30, which gets us 54.6 degrees Fahrenheit, because that's what we were finding. So this tells us that um, the power plant, the nuclear power plant, is most likely not the cause, um, because the temperatures aren't too hot. They range from 52 to 57, so that's not a too hot range for the fish. So they'll look somewhere else for um, the reason for the fish kill. All right, so our next example is example three. We're looking at the effect of extreme scores on the mean. The table lists the ex estimated numbers of unique visitors to the top social media sites during a recent month. So here's our table. We have values from 1,100 down to 80. We're going to find the mean of the number of unique visitors, and then we're going to see if it is accurate. So we're going to take all of these data values to find our mean. So we're on to example three, and we're looking for our mean. So our mean is equal to our x bar, which remember is going to be the summation of all of our data by however many we have. So we're going to add all of our data values. 1,100 plus 1,000 plus 310 plus 255 plus 250 plus 120 plus 110 plus 100 plus 85 plus 80. And then we're going to divide by 10 values because that's how many we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we knew that also because of our list. So we'll divide by 10. If we add or sum up all of those values, we get 3,410 divided by 10 will get us 341. And it was in million, and it told us that at the very top it's in millions. So 341 is our mean. Now, the question for part B was, is it accurate? Well, if we look at the chart, 341 is way up here. So it's not anywhere near the middle numbers. Most of the sites are below that. We only have two that are really large up here. And so the mean or the average is being influenced by those two 
um, really popular sites. So we would not think that this is an accurate um, sense of what our average is because of those two up here. Because if we look at the rest of these, they're nowhere near 341, especially down here at the bottom. So what we call those two that are up here are called outliers. And they are extreme scores in our data set. You have to decide what you want to do with them. You can either discard them or you can use another measure other than the mean. So the median describes the middle of a data set. Think about the strip in the middle of the road when you're driving. That's called the median. We're going to compute the median two ways. One would be the odd number of values. It'll just be the middle number. If it's an even number of values, you have to take the two middle numbers, add them, and then divide by two. The median won't be um, affected by a few outliers because they won't be in the middle of the um, main data set. So for example four, we're going to find the median of two sets of numbers. So here we are at example four. We're on part A. And we're going to put our um, numbers into numerical order. We were given the list. I'm just going to put them in numerical order because we have to do that in order to find our median. So we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 11. So we're looking for our middle number. You can either count all the way in or you can see that we have seven numbers. So if we look at one above that, it would be 8 divided by 4 or sorry, 8 divided by 2 would be 4. You could look at 6 divided by, like if you had 6 numbers divided by 2 would be 3, so you'd have 3 on either side. You'll have to kind of figure out what works best for you. But if we look at this number, there are 3 on this side and 3 on that side. So the median is 6 in this case. So let's look at part B. For part B, we have another list of numbers, and again, I'm going to put them in numerical order. So we have 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, and 13. This time we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers, so if we divide that by 2, we get 4. So that means we're on four on this side and four on this side, but we have two numbers. We don't have a middle number this time because it's an even number of values. So we have to take the seven plus eight and divide by two to find our median. So that'll get us 15 divided by two, which will be 7.5. And that will be our median in this case. All right. Let's go look at our next um, problem. We're going to use a frequency table to find the median milk weight. So acting on a tip from a dissatisfied customer, an agent of the Consumer Protection Agency purchased 50 quarts of a particular brand of milk at various supermarkets to see whether they contain 32 ounces of milk. The results are presented in the table and we need to know what is the median for the distribution. So here are our data values. I, I realize it's a little small. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit here. So we can see. So here's all the data values, and this is the frequency in which they occurred. Let's see if we turn the light back on. If we can, hmm, I don't know if we can see it any better. Um, what we need to understand, and if you were looking at this, you have to look at the frequency and find the middle of them. There's a total of 50, and we were told that because they purchased 50 quarts. So we're looking for number 25 and number 26. There are 25 scores up here. So that means number 25 will land here at 29 ounces, and number 26 will be right here at 30 ounces. So to find our median, for example, 5, To find the median, we need to look at those two um, positions. We are looking at number 25 and number 26. Again, 25, the 25th number was uh, 29 ounces, and the 26th number is 
30 ounces. We don't really want to write all 50 numbers out, so that's where we can use that chart to help us find it. So to find our medians, because these were, um, these are our middle positions, are right here. These two numbers right there are the middle positions. So to find our actual median, we're going to take 25 plus 26 and divide by 2. When we add those together, oh, I grabbed the wrong numbers. So sorry. All right. I'm like, that's not right. We have to grab 29 and 30. So it's going to be 29 plus 30 and divide by 2. So 29 plus 30, because those are the ounces, not the position, we get 59 divided by 2. And 59 divided by 2 will get us 29.5 ounces. So always grab the right numbers. All righty. Moving on to example. Uh, oh, so the median is actually below. 29.5 is below the 32 ounces. And it's off by enough. It's not like at 31 that um, the variation is probably not due to randomness in filling containers. They would have to really do a little more investigation to um, see what's going on. All right, so now we're gonna learn about a five number summary. The median divides a data set into two halves. And then the set of numbers um, below the median is called the lower half. And the set of numbers above the median is called the upper half. The first quartile is the median of the lower half and it's symbolized as quartile 1 or Q1. The third quartile is the median of the upper half, which would be quartile 3. The five number summary of a set of data has the minimum value, the quartile 1, the median, the quartile 3, and the maximum value. So we're going to use that to find the five number summary of president's ages. The table lists the ages of an at inauguration of the presidents who assumed office between 1901 and 2008. We're going to find the following for the data set. We're going to find the median, the lower and upper halves, the first and third quartile, and the five number summary. And I've gone ahead and put them in numerical order to make it easier for us um, to find our information. So this will be example six, and I'm going to write all the numbers in order. So 42, 43, 46, 47, 51, 51, 51, 52, 54, 54, 55, 50, whoop, 55, 55, uh, 56, 56, 60, 61, 64, and 69. Oh, do we have all of them? Nope, there's another 61 in there. So 61 and 69. Got to make sure you have them all. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, Double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yep, there's 19. Want to make sure you have them all, otherwise, it'll mess you up. All righty. So if we're looking for the median, if we look that there are 19, then there's going to be um, 9 on each side of the middle one, and the middle will be the 10th one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 more this way. So 54 will be our median. Now this over here, this is our lower half, and this is our upper half. 
Now in that lower half, we're going to find the median. Again, we have nine terms, so it'll be the fifth one will be the middle. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So 51, this will be our quartile one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, so we're good there. And this one will be our quartile three. This will be our minimum. And this one will be our maximum. So that is our summary. And we can rewrite the summary so it's a little bit clearer. We have the minimum, the quartile one, the median, the quartile three, and the maximum. So our min was 42, our quartile one is 51, our median is 54, quartile three is 60, and the max is 69. So that would be our five number summary. We're going to use that five number summary to do something that's called the box and whisker plot. It incorporates the numerical measure in a graphical pictorial presentation, so we can see that. So we have to find all the values we already did, and now we're going to um, create that box and whisker uh, to show how much the spread is in the middle of the data. All righty. So I'm going to draw a number line to start with. We're going to start, whoops, yeah, so 40 and then 45, try to make it as even as you can, 50, and 55, and 60, and 65, and then up to 70. We have to have it on either side here. All righty. So now that we have um, our number line drawn out, it'll give us an idea of where to put our values on our graph. So if we're looking at a 42, 42 is going to be about right here. And then our maximum was 69, so it's going to be like right there, eh, a little closer maybe. And 51 would be right past 50. 54 is right before 55. And 60, well, that's an easy one right there. So what this does, we're going to draw these out just a little bit longer, just so we can see them. And we'll do a box in the middle with the values that we have here. Just making them just a little longer, because I want them longer than my hash marks on there. So here we will have a box and then we'll attach our whiskers. That's why it's called a box and whiskers because it's got a box and then these look like whiskers. And we can label this again. We want to put our values. So this would be 51, 54, 60 is right there, but I'm going to go ahead and write it anyway so it's clear that that's where it's at. And this is 69. This would be our min, our quartile one, our median, our quartile three, and our maximum. And that's how you draw the box and whiskers plot. And you can actually see a better diagram of it right here. And you don't have to draw it on the number line, but I figured it was easier just to draw it that way. But they've got it kind of represented without. So it shows, um, the box part shows the spread in the middle 50% of the data. That's what that does for us. And the median is not in the middle of the box, so take note of that. The median is a little um, more towards the lower end. So the middle of the data is not symmetrical or balanced. It's actually closer to our quartile one than quartile three. And the whisker on the left side is the same length as the whisker on the right. That suggests the distribution on the top quarter is somewhat similar to the bottom quarter. We often want to know which data value occurs most frequently in a data set. 
So for example, we might want to know, uh, the fashion designer might want to know the most common dress size, or automakers might want to know the most common height of US drivers. So that's called the mode of a set of data, and it's the data value that occurs most frequently. There can be more than one mode per data set, and the mode can be computed for qualitative data such as eye color, political affiliation, or college majors. The mean and the median are not appropriate for that kind of data. So we're going to um, go find the mode. So let's go to example seven. Oh, that was example seven. So we're on to example eight. So we're going to find the mode. So if we're giving, uh, given a set of data that is two, one, six, nine, six, and 11, our mode is going to be the one that occurs most. The only one that repeats is number six, so our mode is six. We look at a second one and we have four, six, two, eight, six, nine, four, and three. We have four occurs twice and so does six. So our mode is going to be four, and six. So you can have more than one mode. If we look at this set, we have two, one, five, six, and eight. None of them repeat at all. They all have one time of occurrence, so this will have no mode. And then if we look at this data set, we have A, B, B, C, D, and F, here our mode is B. So it doesn't have to be a number, it can actually be a letter, and it's B because it occurs twice. So um, comparing the measures of central tendency, for a set of data, mean, median, and mode are usually not the same. You may want to emphasize one measure over another, the three measures are often different, so it is up to you to decide how you want to summarize the data. If you're considering the mean, remember that one or two extreme values in a distribution have an undue influence on the mean. That is where we talked about the uh, outliers. Uh, this is why, for example, in scoring ice skating at the Olympics, the highest and lower, lowest scores are discarded, so they don't have outliers changing um, what's going on as far as your average score.